In the previous video, we created a component with a schematic symbol that will be stored within the Altium 365 workspace, but we understand that using that technology may not be applicable to everyone. So we're going to cover the process of creating a local schematic library as well as creating a schematic symbol that will be stored in it. From the file menu, select New, Library, and Schematic Library. The library editor will open up where you'll be working in four main regions. In the middle of the workspace is the Symbol Editor region where you'll be drawing the actual symbol. The Schematic Library panel will list all of the components currently stored in that library. When a new library is created, it contains a default component with a default name of Component 1. The Models region is where you'll be able to add a footprint or other models to the component itself. So if you were to place this component into a design, this information would follow with it. And as we've seen, we'll be using the Properties panel to make changes to the component as well. The first thing we'll do is change the name of the default component. If the Properties panel isn't open, you can open it from the Panels Access button. In the field for Design Item ID, enter the same name as we're showing here. Since we're creating a transistor, this will be the name that'll be shown when we're looking for it in the Components panel before it gets placed into a design. In the Designator field, type the letter Q followed by a question mark. The Q prefix represents the component type. Other examples would be C for capacitor and R for resistor. The question mark is used as a special character to properly number each component when we're annotating the design. So for example, if this component were to be placed in a design, it could be represented as Q1. We'll also give it a description so that we have a better idea on the specifics of this component. Now when a component has different functional groups or repeating parts, it's usually more convenient to create a multi-part component. For example, our transistor will have two symbols that will represent one component. This will make it easier to read as we'll have less wire crossings in our schematic. With the component selected in the Schematic Library panel, go to the Tools menu and select New Part. You'll see a small arrow beside the component and if you expand that, you'll now see Part A and Part B. Again, this is one component that will be represented by two symbols. Let's click on Part A to start creating the first symbol. Either from the Place menu or from the Active Bar, let's place our first pin. Before placing it, hit the Tab key to edit its properties. In the Properties panel, define the designator as 1 and the name as E. The designator of each pin must be unique, and the reason for that is that the pin mapping between the schematic symbol and the PCB footprint will need to match for proper electrical connectivity. For this symbol, we'll hide the name of the pins for now by clicking on the I icon. In the Electrical Type drop-down, ensure the pin is set to Passive. We'll change the pin length to 200 mils. And if you scroll down, we'll also change the font for the designator to Arial. Let's click on the Pause icon to continue placing the pin. One of the most important things to pay attention to is the orientation of the pin. You'll notice the pin will have a crosshair on your cursor before you place it. This is the electrical hotspot of the pin which is used to make the connection from wire to wire in the schematic. If you happen to place this hotspot in the wrong direction, you'll run into connection issues in your design. Go ahead and place this pin with the crosshair at the top of the pin so that it's easier to wire to. After placing the first pin, there will be another pin on your cursor ready to be placed. Hit the tab key to pause the placement and change the designator to 2 and the name as B. When you're done, hit the pause icon and place it to the bottom left of pin 1 with the hotspot on the left hand side. Do the same for a third pin with the designator as 6 and the name as C. This pin will be placed below and in line with pin 1 with the hotspot on the bottom and it should now look just like ours. Now we need to form the graphical part of the symbol which can be done by placing lines, rectangles, arcs, and polygons. From the active bar, select Place Line and draw three lines as we're showing here. To place lines at an angle, you can use the spacebar to change the drawing angle. When you're done, select all of the lines and we'll change the color to blue in the Properties panel. Now this symbol is an NPN transistor, so we should add an arrow that indicates the direction of the emitter. From the Place menu, you can either place lines or a polygon to draw an arrow. You may need to change the grid or some of the properties to make it symmetrical. So this is really all it takes to create a schematic symbol. Now this is only the first part of the symbol and we need to finish part B to make this symbol complete. Select everything from this part and copy it using the Ctrl C shortcut keys. Make sure you select part B in the schematic library panel and paste the copied part using Ctrl V. 
We just need to change the pin designators and names for everything to be complete. The second part of the symbol should now look like what we're showing. Go ahead and save this library as your new symbol will be stored in it. Anytime you want to make a change to the symbol, simply open up the library and select the desired symbol from the schematic library panel. For this entire component to be complete, we'll need to add a footprint to it, which we'll be covering in the near future. So let's keep this tab open so we can access it later on.